Hi everyone, it's Boonie. I'm going to try and make a quick video again. This time it's going to be on some thoughts related to a saboteur archetype. And when I do talk about archetypes, primarily I pull from Joseph Campbell's conversations, interviews, um, Alan Watts sometimes, but also Buddhist philosophy and Carolyn Miss. So you combine them all together and then my meditations on my personal experiences and conceptualizations of archetypal things and this is where I'm at. So um, I tend to listen to her lectures on the survival archetypes a lot and I know I haven't made many on them. I, I think I'm ready. I feel like I had to really honor an understanding of these four. Um, I'll just mention them briefly and then you can just look them up too. So there are survival, four survival archetypes from Carolyn Miss. Her, her conceptualization is like the child, the victim, the prostitute, and the saboteur. I'm going to touch on the saboteur only a little bit because it's related very much to being an intuitive, being to a cerebral person, and being someone who's very idea focused. So as we grow and try to reclaim parts of ourselves, rewrite, you know, parts of this narrative that we have, uh, try different things, redo, reevaluate, try again. Um, I just wanted to make a note, you know, you can do more work and explore, think on your own about how we sabotage ourselves when we want to grow. And so I say this as someone who has very much been an idea person as like a dominant intuitive, that's where I thrive. I thrive thinking about possibility, future orientation, the constant bigger picture of like this can be this can be there and we can go more 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 like you you need to brainstorm alternative solutions to some something you come to me like I'm really good at it um, at the same time if you are stuck in this process of idea only I'm just going to separate it in a couple ways so if you know you're good at something the brainstorm facilitation getting people unstuck by thinking about alternative solutions the, all this information or the feedback comes from lived experience and or being in a system where you've been at the bottom and worked your way up to the top it 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 doesn't just come out of nowhere i sometimes hear intuitives or big idea people talk about i don't want to do the work i just want to tell people what to do what my vision is and I'm sorry, that's crap. Like, it's being lazy. You don't want to work. Like, if you have an idea or a vision and you just say like, well, I just want to be the idea person, it's bullshit. You have to be able to explain in a way where you've put your boots on the ground and done the same thing too. After a while where you've put in the time to truly understand how this monster of a thing works, to relay back to other people who are more skilled at specific areas of your dream or the vision, then it makes more sense. But if you're coming out, you know, all bright eyed and, and dreamy, thinking about all I ever want to do is tell people what the vision is without ever having lived experience on what the dream actually looks like, you're going to fail and you're going to live in this land of saboteur. So the saboteur archetype is a part of all of us where we'd rather be comfortable not growing or changing because someone's taking care of you or you don't have to take any risk. You know, the one of the big things that most people come to the conclusion of as you grow and change is change is uncomfortable. Like we don't change because we'd rather be in a known type of discomfort. It could be hell. It could be fucking hell, but you'll stay there because you know and can predict what can happen. So we don't change. We can't take that leap of faith to try something different because it is unknown. So it's like a psychological gamble to try something different. Because of that, it is a lifelong process to get stronger in deal with, you know what, I could fail. If I try something and risk changing the comfort of what I know now, I can risk losing all this, even though it's not the best situation, but I know. So I don't have to feel like a failure. You know, you can be failing or not doing well in this land, this area of you or whatever, this world that you're in, but it's yours. You made the choice to stay. But 
the gamble also with the saboteur is like I talk about constantly is fearing judgment from other people or the projections that people have on what it quote unquote means to fail. And that is sort of the test. All of this is a test with how how strong your soul stamina is. So those words are taken from Carol- Carolyn Miss too. Like I don't know how else to describe what it means to make that leap and decide that this journey is worth pursuing because it is hard and you will be tested again and again. Just like how I disappear and come back again and again, I don't stop. You know, you can take your breaks, you can regroup, you can learn new skills. And again, the test is to always come back to see that maybe it's worth pursuing because your passions and your thoughts keep on going back to this thing. So like back to being an intuitive, right? We love talking about ideas and I know the criticism from sensates or people who are more practical is like, you're always thinking, why aren't you doing anything? So my caveat for that all is that intuitives, we thrive in the land of abstraction. We thrive in idea orientation too. Um, we're good at that. We can help sensates feel more attuned to their to the abstract concept of who they are as a person, plan, think ahead, you know, think about things that they don't usually think about because they might be more, whatchamacallit, instinctual, reactive, let's just do stuff and figure out what it means later kind of thing. Like these are all different forms of cognition, which is why it's important to respect and acknowledge all the different ways that we tend to make decisions and take action. At the same time, for those of us who live in the world of like tangible life form, like this us, this is like we have a body here. You have a body. If you're living purely as an idea person and you don't want to do things like touch things, go out and like wake up in the morning do work that's the extreme right idea people don't want to do that we have a very limited connection to the physical body so I've mentioned this a long time ago about how we as intuitives we have the joy and the rest of our lives to pursue physical sensation sensates have the rest of their lives to balance out and integrate their own definitions of what it means to be attached to ideas, concepts, you know, planning, thinking about time, the future, the past, you know. So we have ways to connect with each other and influence each other to grow in different ways. At the same time, if you are leaning too much in a certain form, you're disconnecting from a body that we're gifted with. And I always have that caveat of always there's those caveats everywhere. Like if you're disabled, if you cannot move your body, you're, you are a floating head, like then, yeah, do what you can to pursue ideas and joy of abstraction as much as you can. Do you? For those of us who have access to our body but are denying that we have one, um, that's, that's a missing component. Like we can learn to listen to our bodies and that involves taking action, moving around, doing work that is not easy that a lot of sensates tend to do you know um we can learn from each other and that's the wonderful gift of archetypes there's so many variations of one kind right a lot of intuitives follow me different versions of a archetype depending on all the like factors that shape you you know all life experiences and so if you have ideas and you want to remain in the world of ideas and then again you have a vision People are more likely to follow the vision when you've done the work too. I, I don't know how else to emphasize this. Like, you cannot just be talk. It's, it's bullshit. Like, it's hard to believe someone who's never gone through the trenches if you're talking about the trenches as an abstract idea. Like, it's weird, you know. Um, but if you have a vision and you want to support people or have whatever cause, big thing that you're dreaming of, I think that more people are likely to buy into the mission and support and follow the visionary when they believe and have seen the work put in. Like the blood, sweat, and tears really is a thing. Like I have respect for people who have done the work to show that they're dedicated to a cause. It just means so much more to to see that. So, and again, 
if this message pokes you, I hope you take pause and think about it. Why does it poke you? If you have a reaction to the things that I've said, what does it mean? Like, what part of it can you pause and be like, maybe it's some of it's true or is complete garbage? Fine. That's fine too. It's just I have said things that are related to what I think would help those who are stuck in the world of ideas only. And that doesn't have to be the case for intuitives. If you are finding a way that you are tangible and practical and a thought person, an idea person, then of course this doesn't relate to you. You don't have to defend yourself, but you can prove in the comments that you have found a way to balance yourself so other intuitives can feel like there is possibility too. Because that's what we lean towards. We lean towards possibility. There has to be something to show that possibility actually can happen too. It's not just talking about it. You know, it's a lot of hot air. So uh, I hope that you're able to take these bits and pieces and use them as needed and and just take pause. Like if even if it doesn't relate to you, I'm sure you can apply this to other people in your life and it can help you better understand them and their processes and what they might need in terms of support or understanding. So thanks for watching, everyone. Take care.